Greetings everybody and welcome back to my 7 Days to Die modding tutorial. We are now on episode 10. In the last episode guys we did some really cool stuff with x -Paths, and I showed you how you can do some nice little shortcuts. We removed food poisoning completely apart from, from a couple of items like the rotting flesh and the sham sandwich and we also managed to remove the ability to repair the MR10 and the AK-47 with repair kits which is some pretty cool stuff. So at this point guys you should now know how to add new items and make make changes to existing items in the game. Now there are of course a lot more advanced properties for items. We haven't covered things like uh, tools and weapons. We haven't really looked at the triggered effects or passive effects and things like that yet. But don't worry, that will be coming in later tutorials. For now, this is going to be the last episode we have on items. Now the main reason being is because I want to move on to some other sections of the XML um, like loot groups, traders and uh, even your own blocks and those are entire new sections unto themselves so i think it's time that we wrap up the item section by making our steel pipe um, a schematic unlocked recipe so let's go ahead and do that the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and and look for any old schematic in the game because we can use that um, as a basis for our own one copying and pasting is amazing okay so yeah let's go and type in schematic um, if I can, not, not schematic. So we're going to type schematic, close quote, and then close square brackets. Okay, so let's look at the iron club schematic and try and, uh, try and have a look and see how schematics work. So, the first thing you'll notice is a new property now called extends. And it says it extends from schematic master. Now, what does extends actually do? Well, let's have a look at Schematic Master. You can see that the Schematic Master has a description key, it has an item type icon, it has all these properties here that we have to define. Now what Extends does is it says, take all the properties from Schematic Master and apply them right here, and then go ahead and do other properties below it. So essentially, Extends is saying, copy all the properties from Schematic Master and put them here. So any properties that are defined up here, in schematic master will also be defined down here now this is a new one as well creative mode this says whether it will actually be displayed in creative mode or not if you set it as player it means that the player can access it in creative mode without having to click the dev block button if you click if you set this to dev that means the schematic will not initially appear in creative mode, but you will have to go ahead and enable the dev items and blocks before you can see it. So you just have to, essentially it's like, do you have to press a button first or not? You can also set it to none if you don't want it to show up in creative mode at all, whether it be from the player side or from the dev side. And none can be very useful if you go ahead and uh, if you want it to go ahead and unlock or if, if it's like a master block or something that is not actually meant to be used in game, but just extended from, then that's where none would be very important. But for now, let's go and set it back to player. Okay, so then here comes the, the meat of the stuff that we're going to look into. The first one is custom icon. We've seen this before. This is going to make the melee club iron schematic have the same icon as the iron reinforced club. Essentially, that's, what it, that's all it does. Now, the way that the book icon is added in the corner is by the item type icon right here you can see it's got item type icon as book and what this is saying is that any schematic will have a little book icon in the corner and then once you've read the schematic it'll have the red the the book red icon so like the opened book so then that's the alt item type icon which is pretty cool um so every schematic has an a, an item type icon of a book because it extends from the schematic master so we don't have to define it again down here which is good now the unlocks is what recipes does it unlock and in this case it unlocks the iron reinforced club now lastly um, we have the effect group here now this is a little bit uh, a little bit crazy but the only thing you need to know right here is what once you've read the book, so once your primary action has ended, in this case your primary action is reading the book, it's going to set um, your Melee Club Iron C-Var, or it's going to say, have you learned this item? It starts at zero and it's going to set it to one. So essentially all that does is it says, now you've learned this item. And then it's also going to go ahead and give you 
50 XP. So once you also end your first action, it's going to give me some XP of 50. Now, the good thing is this schematic, we can pretty much just copy and change for our needs, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the schematic and we're going to keep, we're going to stick to the same naming conventions as before. So down here, we're going to add a schematic for the steel pipe. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this. And instead of a melee club iron schematic, it's going to be a resource steel pipe schematic. Now, what I tend to do is I tend to do it this way around. So I do resource steel pipe, then my mod name, and then schematic. You could also do it resource steel pipe schematic, and then your mod name at the end if you wanted to do it that way. But I'm going to do it this way just because for me, it makes it kind of easier to read. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and adjust some values. Now, all we really need to do here is adjust this value to have the same icon as our steel pipe. So we're just going to change that one to this. And then the same with the unlocks. We're just going to change Melee Club Iron to steel pipe. So now, now that unlocks the steel pipe. And then what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the Melee Club Iron C bar to the resource steel pipe C bar. And there we go. We're just going to set it to one. And that is it. That's all we need to do. And now we have a schematic that will unlock this recipe. However, there is a bit of a catch. The first thing we need to do is we actually need to localize this as well. We don't need to do the description key, though. We only need to do the name key. So like we did before, when we localize an item, we need to do this for the schematic. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, a steel pipe FM schematic. So this, again, is an item. So it's in items.xml, but this is a, a, a schematic. Okay, it's not a resource this time, it's a schematic. And then three blank commas, and then steel pipe schematic. Now we don't need to just do the description, and I'll tell you why. If we go to schematic master again, you'll see there is another property here description key and this has has a description key of schematic general group description so if i go ahead and grab this guy and let's go to our vanilla localization file which is this this big bugger right here um if we open this guy and i go ahead and paste this and do a lookup for it every schematic uses this description key and it says reading the schematic will teach you how to craft this item the quality of a crafted item is determined by its governing perk such as shotgun messiah for all shotguns some items are crafted with parts and scrapped for the same parts an example is pump shotguns that scrap to pump shotgun parts and are crafted using those parts so essentially every schematic has this description but instead of having to define it for every schematic individually you can set the description key for all your schematics just to follow this one so now even though we haven't specifically specified a description key for the schematic like we did for the item, because it extends from the schematic master and because the schematic master already has an assigned description key of this, which is already defined in the vanilla localization file, we don't need to define it ourselves, which is really good. So that will take care of that. We already have our custom icon and we are, have our item type icon from the vanilla one which is awesome, so we don't need to worry about that. The only other things we need to do now is make sure that the recipe for the item is learnable. So let's go into our recipes right here. And you'll remember that the recipes, in order to, for them to be unlockable, needed a tag of learnable, right? So let's go ahead and add that. So all we need to do is at the end of our recipe right here, to make it unlockable with a schematic, we just go tags equals and then learnable and now what this will do is by default this recipe will now be locked until the schematic is read and the recipe has been learned now we're not quite done okay we're, we're almost there we're almost there but we're not quite done there's one last thing we need to do so if we go into the vanilla items let's look at the iron reinforced club okay so melee club iron so there's the schematic i just want the regular melee club iron now if we look down these properties here there is a lot of them but there will be one property in particular that we need to focus on this one property name equals unlocked by and this is unlocked by the pummel peat perk or the melee club iron schematic what we want to do is have our one unlocked by our own schematic okay so what we're going to do is we're going to copy this property and we're going to just paste it into our one and then change the value so what we need to do is in our steel pipe item itself at the bottom, we need to add this property. But this guy isn't unlocked by Pommel Pete, so we can go ahead and remove this guy 
and he's also not unlocked by the iron schematic. So we're going to remove this guy. Instead, he is unlocked by our schematic here. Okay. Now, once we make all these changes, the steel pipe will be locked until we read the schematic. Let's go in game now and check that this all works. And if this does all work, then guys, you will now be able to make schematics for your items and have them unlocked via schematics. Now, you guys might have some questions like, so how do I unlock it via a perk or a skill? Things like that. I will be covering that, but before I do cover that, we need a little bit more knowledge about the buffs and progression system and the skill system before we can go ahead and delve into that. So, although we have seen a little bit of the passive effects and triggered effects and buffs and things like that, there is a much, much deeper rabbit hole to go down before we're going to cover that. So yeah, trust me, we will get there and I will show you exactly how to do it, but for right now, I just want to go in game and show you that what we've done now is added a schematic and let it unlock the steel pipe. So let's go and do that and see what happens. So let's log in game and let's go to... Uh, where is my forge? My forge is all the way over here, isn't it? Why did I... why did I do this? Why did I do this? <laughs> why did I run all this way? I have no idea. Okay, here's my forge. So now, if we go ahead and look at our steel pipe, lo and behold, you can see the steel pipe is now locked. Now, because we add the unlocked by tag, it will show you exactly what you need to unlock it. We need the steel pipe schematic in order to unlock it. So, let's go ahead and see if the steel pipe schematic is in game. So, let's go ahead and go create a menu, debug, and let's go and see if our schematic is here. Okay, so our steel pipe schematic, there it is, right there. Steel pipe schematic. Now, as you can see, because the schematic master already assigned the description key, and because our schematic extends from schematic master, we didn't have to assign a description key ourselves. We can just use the one in Lua. So we don't ever have to worry about filling these in. You can add your own custom one if you like. You can set the description key to use your own custom one if you so wish. But as you can see, this has the same as the villain schematic. So whatever schematic I, I click on, um, in most cases, for food it's slightly different, but for these ones, uh, I think. Yeah, for these ones, for example, you can see that these are pretty much all the uh, all the same. So, this guy right here has the schematic. Now, if I take this and read it, we should see now that by reading this, we'll use it. Now, if I go back into the forge, we should see that, lo and behold, it's now unlocked. And you can see that the recipe has now been unlocked right here, which is awesome. And there you go, guys. That is pretty much how you add schematics for your items, which is really, really cool. Now, you can also go ahead and do this for vanilla items as well. So, I don't know. Let's see. Is there any, like, vanilla items that would be pretty interesting to craft our schematic? Why don't we do it for our solar cell? So, we also made a solar cell recipe. Why don't we go ahead and do it for our solar cell? Because this will involve us having to append some things um, to the solar cell and uh, actually working with some of the vanilla files, which is, of course is the more complicated example. Let's go ahead and do that. So in our recipes file here, let's go ahead and look for the solar panel. Um, so there's the acid, here we go, solar cell. So what we wanna do is we want to make this unlockable via a perk. The only thing we have to do on the recipe side is add tags equals learnable. The only thing we need to do on the recipe side is just add the learnable tag to it. But now we have to do two things. We have to make a schematic for the solar cell. And in the solar cell itself, we have to append a new unlocked by tag and then make it use the schematic as well. OK, so first of all, let's go ahead and find our stuff here. So let's go ahead and copy the schematic. And then we're also going to do a solar cell schematic as well. So let's go do that. So we're going to come down here and I'm going to call this um, now because it's called just solar cell and it's a vanilla one. I'm just going to say solar cell. And then I'm going to put my MFM on this for my mod name, my first modeler schematic. OK, so this is now going to unlock the solar cell. So all we need to do for the schematic is change all this stuff into solar cell. OK, so we're just going to change it to this. Nothing too hard right there. The next thing we need to do is we need to find the item whose name is solar cell and append the unlocked by property, right? So we need to append this property to the already existing vanilla solar cell. So in order to do that, 
uh, actually, sorry, the unlocked by property. This is the one we need. So we need to go ahead and append this property with the solar cell schematic to the solar cell itself. So if we come down here a bit, we're going to say um, makes the solar cell require a schematic to unlock. OK, so how do we do that? Well, we're going to use append. And of course, uh, that's going to take an XPath. So I open and close my tag there. And then the XPath in this case is going to be, let's use double slash just to find the item. And then we want the item whose name equals solar cell. Awesome. And that's all we need to do, because we're literally just appending the property to this item. So just like we've got here, item name is resource steel pipe, and we've just added it here. For the vanilla one, we just want to find the item whose name is solar cell and append it there. So then we're just going to paste this property in here that we copied from earlier. And then we're going to go ahead and grab the schematic right here. And then we're going to change that in the unlock spy to this guy. The only thing I need to do now is go ahead and craft the, or I need to go ahead and localize this, right? So that it actually shows up properly in game in English, not in uh, code garbage. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to say this guy, solar cell uh, MFM schematic is again an item. It's a schematic. And it doesn't have anything in those, so we can just leave those blank. And then this is going to be a solar cell schematic. Very good. Let's launch the game again and let's see now if our solar cell is learnable. And as long as we've done everything correctly, it should very well be. Let's go ahead and launch. I'm excited now. I'm, I'm excited to see if this worked. So let's see here. Did this work or did it not? We're going to find out in due course. OK, so continue and go to here. And let's go ahead and do the F1 test. Hashtag F1 test. Let's do it. Hopefully we don't get any uh, red text or yellow text. That'd be good. We might get yellow text from vanilla, but other than that, we shouldn't. Here we go. Looks like we're good. No errors yet. All right. So now, if we look in the forge again, we should see that lo and behold, the solar cell is locked and it's unlocked by the solar cell schematic. Look at that. So now, let's go ahead and test this out. So let's go into creative mode and let's just type solar cell schematic and look at that. There's our schematic with the icon because remember we used the custom icon for solar cell, which is the vanilla one. And it's got the it's got the description again because it extends from the base one, and it's got the name localized and everything. So let's go ahead and take this and read it, and just make sure this works. So we use it, and then if we come to here, we should see that the solar cell is now available to craft. So look at that, guys! We've now gone ahead and made our solar cell craftable in the forge, and it also is required to be unlocked via a schematic. How awesome is that? So there you go, guys. Now, by the end of this tutorial, you should be able to go ahead and add schematics for your own modded items or alter vanilla items to be able to use schematic as well. Of course, if any of this XPath was a little confusing or if you had any questions about how this works or what each of the properties do, then, you know, feel free to ask me and I will help you out as best I can. This, I'm, I'm sure, though, um, after the intense XPath thing we did in the last episode, this is probably a bit of a nice break for you guys. Um, so, yeah, but this concludes the items part of the tutorial series for now. In future parts of the series, guys, we're going to start looking at other cool things. In particular, I want to start showing you how to alter the loot tables and loot lists and also the trader inventories as well so that you can start making your stuff show up in loot and in traders because I think that'd be really cool. You know, you, you can pick your own item in the game, but if you can't find it anywhere, then, you know, or, you know, if you can't, if you can craft it, but maybe you can't find it, then yeah, that's that's not going to be too good. So you might want to have items in game that you can also find. So we're going to go ahead and show you that in the next episode when we start looking at the loot XML file. But for right now, guys, we're at a pretty good point to end off the episode. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So until then, bye!